Hello guys, we're gonna get this situated. Make sure we can all see it appropriately. Okay, today we're going to be covering adding and subtracting fractions. Okay, I um, dropped the ball and didn't print the papers for you. If you would like to print a copy of it, it is in Schoology and you can print the um, worksheets. Otherwise it's handwritten. So you may want to freeze the video at this point or pause it so that you can copy this information down. Make sure that you have your name, the title, the date, the class and the number. And then this is your addition and subtraction fraction steps. Okay, the first step is always rewrite the problems from mixed numbers to improper fractions. Then you find a common denominator by identifying the least common denominator, the LCD. Then you rewrite the fractions using the LCD as the denominator. Adjust your numerator as needed. And then we add or subtract the numerators and keep the common denominator. And then if it's needed, you simplify. So again, if you need to pause at this point to write this down, go right ahead. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and start working some examples if you chose to print. All right, so example one. This is one over 10 plus <clears throat> three over 10, and this is the simplest problem. Okay, it already has a common denominator. So now I'm just going to add the numerators and that's going to give me, so I'm adding my numerators, so that's going to give me 4 over 10. And now I need to simplify because they are both even. So I'm going to divide by 2, divide by 2, and that gives me 2 fifths as my final answer. And make sure that you box your answer and show all of your work. Hey, example 2. one fourth plus two thirds. Now our first step here is we have to find a common denominator. So I'm looking for a number that both four and three can go into evenly. The easiest way to find a common denominator is to multiply the two together, which gives me 12. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna think, is there anything smaller than 12 that can four and three can go into? And I've got the factors of 12 or two, no, six, no, four, no, three, no, one, no, 12, no. So 12, 12 is it, yes, 12 is yes. So my common denominator is going to be 12. So I'm gonna write that new denominator down and I'm gonna ask myself, how many times does four go into 12? Three times. So I'm gonna multiply times three. One times three gives me three. 3 goes into 12 four times, so I'm going to multiply times 4, the numerator times 4, so 2 times 4 is 8. And now I have a common denominator, and I treat it just like we did number 1. So I'm going to add my numerators. 3 plus 8 is 11 twelfths. I can't simplify this any further, so this is my final answer. Now, we're going to work certain problems from here. So if you've printed the worksheet, we're not going to be using all of the problems on here right now in the video. You will be doing the rest of those as your classwork homework assignment. So we're jumping now to number four. And we have negative six minus one fourth. Now, I actually put the negative up here, but it's actually kind of right here. This is, should be a big number six, so we can make this better. There we go, that's exactly right. All right, so now we've got to think about what is the denominator of six? How do I make the whole number six into a fraction? Anytime you need to do that, you put the whole number over one. So I'm gonna make a little note right here. Make whole number fraction by putting over one. That's how you make a whole number into a fraction. You put it over one. All right, so now we've got a fraction. So, okay, at this point, I'm now going to need to find a common denominator between one and four, that's gonna be four. So I'm going to now have four minus 
four. Now, when I've got a negative sign like this, okay, it can either go into the top or the bottom, not both, okay? So I'm gonna add another little note over here. Okay, so negative sign on fraction goes to top or bottom, not both. So it either goes to the top or the bottom, not the both, not both. All right, so now we can finish this problem. <clears throat> One goes into four, four times. So I'm gonna do times four. So that's gonna give me, now, I know that I'm gonna have a negative right here because I've chose to move it to the top. So I'm just doing six times four. So that's gonna give me a 24. Now, four goes into four. So this is the same. I'm just rewriting this information. All right, so now I'm going to just do my work. Follow my integer rules here, okay? So this means I've got negative 24 and this minus, this is a negative. So I'm gonna think of this as negative 24 plus negative one. There's the same sign, so they're doing teamwork. So that's gonna give me a negative 24 over, sorry, I can't add, negative 25 over four. And now we need to simplify. This, I'm gonna say this is an acceptable answer but we want to be able to write it in both. So therefore I'm gonna change this to a mixed number. So I'm gonna do four goes into 25, six times. So I'm gonna have a negative six and one fourth. And I know that some of you may have been like, I can do this much simpler. Yes, I get it. But remember when we're doing these problems, we are learning the correct process for when it's a different type of problem. We're practicing the process, not just how to get to the answer. Okay, next problem. Number five, we have two ninths minus negative five eighteenths. Let me move this up. Okay, <clears throat> so when I'm looking at this, first things I'm gonna notice is this is a double negative. Since that's a double negative, I'm gonna first things first, that makes a big plus because that's a double negative. So now it's just a big addition problem, but I've gotta find a common denominator. My common denominator between nine and 18 is going to be 18 plus 18. This has the same denominator, so I'm just gonna rewrite the numerator. And now nine goes into 18 twice, so I'm gonna do times two. So this now becomes four over 18. And now we just add. So I end up with 9 over 18, which simplifies to 1 half. And there's that final answer. Okay, next example. Number 7. We have negative 2 and 3 eighths minus one and three fourths. Now, one way to think about this right off is I've got both negative numbers here. So therefore I'm going to be in a sense, adding them together and I better end up with a negative answer is your first thoughts. But when we're looking at this, my directions say to write all mixed numbers as improper fractions. When I'm doing that, I'm not worried about integer rules. We're just changing them, okay? We're just changing to improper fractions. So right now we're going to ignore integer rules when changing to improper fractions. So I can go ahead and just write that this is gonna be a negative. I always write my negatives on the top, but it really doesn't matter. Eight times two, so that's 16, plus three is 15. So this is going to be, no, eight times two is 16, plus three is 19. So we have a negative 19 over eight minus 
four times one is four, plus three is seven fourths. Now we need to find a common denominator, which is going to be eight. So this is going to be written the same, negative 19 over eight minus, now here, my common denominator is eight. Four goes into eight twice, so I'm gonna do times two. So this is gonna be minus 14. When I'm looking at this, they're both negative, so therefore I'm adding, okay? Because both of these are negative numbers, I'm actually going to add, they're doing teamwork. So we end up with a negative 33 over eight. And then this could be written as this, I can't simplify this any further. So this is a correct answer, or I change it to the mixed number. So eight's gonna go into 33, this is a negative number, so my answer is going to be negative. It's going to go eight into 33 four times, so it's going to be a negative four and one eighth, because I'm going to have one left over. Eight goes into 33, 33 four times, which is going to be 32. 33 minus 32 is one. All right, we have two more examples, guys. Almost done. <clears throat> In this page, I'm gonna just create a new page so it doesn't um, kind of show through. All right, so this is number 10, and we have one and seven sixteenths minus one and one sixth. So again, the first step is to change them to improper fractions. So 16 times one is 16, plus seven is, so we have 23 sixteenths minus one times one, six times one is six plus one is seven sixth. And now we need to find a common denominator. And I'm gonna be perfectly honest, I don't know one right now. So I'm going to have to sit here and think, I'm gonna look at the bigger one and I'm gonna do okay. 16 times two, that gives me 32. Six does not go into 32 evenly. So I'm gonna do 16 times three, that gives me 48. Ah, six does go into 48, so therefore this one will work. So I'm now going to have a common denominator of 48. 16 goes into 48 three times, so I'm doing times three. 23 times three is 69. Six goes into 48 eight times, so I'm doing seven times eight, which gives me 56. And now I subtract. 69 minus 56 is 13 over 48, and this cannot be simplified any further. There's my answer. All right, last one. Okay, this is an application problem, which is a fancy way of saying word problem. Okay, application, which is a word problem. And this is number 14. So I'm gonna write the word problem during a recent two-day snowstorm. It snowed six and one-eighth inches on the first day. No laughing at the way I say on. My children laugh all the time and make fun of me. Okay, that's my South Louisiana accent coming off. And eight and five twelfths inches on the second day. Find total snowfall. If you need to pause at this point to finish writing this down, go right ahead and then you can start back up. So keywords from in here that we need to pay attention to. Okay, during a recent two-day snowstorm, it snowed six and one-eighths on the first day, eight and five-twelfths, on the second day, we want to find, this is my question, circle the question, we want to find the total, okay? So that means my problem 
is going to be written as, and therefore you need to write the expression that represents it, and then you calculate. So it's going to be six and one eighth plus eight and five twelfths. And now we go to calculating. So I'm gonna be doing eight times six, we first change to improper fractions. Eight times six is 48 plus one, so that's gonna give me 49 over eight. 12 times eight plus five, that's gonna give me 101 over 12. I'm just adding, so I'm going to add the numerators and that's gonna give me, oh, I can't do that yet. I've gotta find a common denominator, okay? So let me erase this. And what's happening right now is my brain is thinking that there is a different way that you can work this problem that's gonna be a little bit easier and I'm going to show you that. So we have 49 over 101, okay? We have to find the common denominator, which for this is going to be 24. And the way you figure that out is I'm doing 12 times two, which gives me 24. Eight goes into 24, so that works. Eight goes into 24 three times, so I'm doing times three, and that's gonna give me 147. 12 times two, 101 times two, so that gives me 202. And now I'm adding, now we add the numerators and we get 349 over 24, which can't be simplified. Trust me on that, but it's much easier if I take it to the next step. Okay, when I reduce it to mix to an improper fraction, it becomes one and 19 over 24. Now, this I can see easily, this part can't be simplified, so we're done. I can't go any further. It's not one, it's 14, that doesn't make sense. 14, and remember, this is an application problem, so you must write your units. You must always have your units included when it's an application slash word problem. Okay, so now that's one way to work this. Okay, another way to work this is if I have the problem, six and one eighth plus eight and five twelfths. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is go through and find a common denominator. I'm not going to change it to an improper fraction. I'm gonna leave them as improper as mixed numbers, I mean. So my common denominator is going to be 24. Eight goes into 24, three times, so I have three here. 12 goes into 24, two times, so I do times two, five times two is 10. Now I'm going to add these two together. So my next step here is going to be to add. Six plus eight is 14, three plus did I write that correctly? What did I do? I did something, guys. Five twelfths. We have six and eight. No, I wrote the wrong number over here. This is thirteen over twenty-four inches, and there is my final answer. And honestly, I like this pro problem better when you're adding. Okay, so if adding keep as mixed numbers, I think it's more beneficial. And I made an error over here. Write this. This answer is actually 14 and 13 over 24. Because I find the bigger your numbers, the larger the chance of error. This keeps them as small and more manageable. Okay. When you are done with copying the notes from the video, finish rest of notes problems as your 
classwork homework assignment. Make sure that you mention in the chat when you are finished copying up to here. Thank you.